ban phase that came through from Energy Pacemaker yeah. as we jump straight into Champ Select. And you can see Energy Pacemaker getting rid of the Lulu, the Nidalee, as well as the Callista, but not touching the Zerath. Yeah, the Zerath available now. And Snake probably sort of wondering what they've been offered here. Mbaka hasn't decided to lock it in just yet. Beast is going to take away the Rek'Sai. And Raphael, he can take the Zerath now if he wants to. Yeah, it certainly is available if he wants to push that one through. We see the Annie was the first pick, and on the side of Snake, they take the Rek'Sai as well as the Maokai. We've seen that Flandre really is favoring that Maokai at the moment. Yeah. This is the fourth time that he's played it in a row, I believe. Of course, had a cheeky game of someone else in the middle there, but then straight back to the Maokai as well. Raphael hovering over a few different champions. Not entirely sure what that's going to be, as Drizzle has the opportunity to pick up his lease in if he wants to, but looks like it might be the Jarvan. Yeah, so Jarvan might be the pick away here, and we see Kane going for another mid-game Centrix AD away from the hyper carry that he played last time in Jinx. We see the Lucian being picked up, and straight away, Baka. I'm sure he was telling his team to pick it the first time around because that was an insta-lock. Yeah, yeah, and um, why the heck not? I mean, of course, it's been banned away from him in the last, oh, so many games, probably about five champ selects that has not made it onto the, the pick phase, and... It's understandable. Barker has shown so much mastery of that champion and so much comfort as well as the Energy Pacemaker. They might have a plan for it, but I'm not sure what that'll be. Diana's available if he wants to take that. As we see, once again, Kane toying with my heart. Yeah, it is going to be the Diana Hover here and the locked in now for sure. And Garen has been locked in. Spawn, welcome to your favorite game of the LPL. Yeah, this is amazing. Garen is such a good anti-carry against 80 carries. I really honestly do feel that. He gets very, very big and has one of those old carryover spells that you don't expect in the queue with the silence still. So it just yep. is so hard to get away from him. You can pick up things like Kog'Maw, these hyper carries, but Garen really doesn't care. Has a very smooth transition into the Thorn Mail. And as long as he has that flash up, can do some work. The problem is, it doesn't have flash, doesn't really do much. Yeah, and that, there's no Black Shield, there's no Morgana there, so Monsoon going to be a little bit of a worry. Of course, Beast is going to be able to do some CCing as well. Flandre is a CC machine. And Crystal hopping on the Cogmaw. Yeah, so Cogmaw is the selection here. And these are really two of Crystal's comfort picks, the Callista and now the Cogmaw. So we're going to see him in his, I guess, most comfortable environment on the little Void puppy. And yep. Definitely isn't a Protect the Cogmaw comp, but still confident enough to run it. It's a no sustain lane, so there is a lot of kill pressure that will come out of Kane and Shu in the bottom lane if it is not a lane swap. But when you take Garen, you expect to probably get lane swapped on. Yeah, you probably don't want to give Garen that 1v1 matchup. That is, of course, probably where he's good, isn't it? Uh, I'm not even convinced he's good in a 1v1 as we see. <laughs> it is the Garen versus Maokai. I like Garen a lot, and even I justify, find it hard to justify picking him sometimes. So. Yeah, although you still do. Amazing Jay going to take that one to the top lane against the Maokai, though. Drizzle is going to be on the Jarvan this time as Beast has the Rek'Sai, the coveted jungle pick, as Raphael on the, the Diana. And we'll see whether Barker's Zerath is going to be strong enough. Of course, it is has been fantastic over the season. Kane on the Lucian and Crystal on that long-range Kog'Maw and Shu, all the engage versus Ella with all the disengage. Yeah, exactly right. Trying to get that Annie in there for the big stuns. Energy Pacemaker putting together a weird composition. Is They're it? very creative. Yeah. Sometimes ineffective. Hopefully that isn't the case this time around. Yeah, certainly hope to see whether that Cataclysm is going to be blocking out a Garen, but let's have a look as we hop... And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Energy Pacemaker taking on Snake for our second match of the day. And we'll see whether Energy Pacemaker can bounce back with some interesting picks. Yeah, certainly are some interesting picks. Don't know why we're following a Diana. There is a Garen on the rift, Mr. Spectator. <laughs> Take me to the top lane. And isn't he a handsome man? Oh, he certainly is. Of course, that remake making him very attractive. Give himself a... Very cool pretty, saber. Yeah, super cool saber. As maybe some action in the bottom lane. Kane getting chunked out. Might want to take a look down there. But uh, <laughs> no, nothing happening. Back to Garen. Yep, there we are. Beautiful. Of course, that passive 
is very effective late game now. Early game, it still is just a laning tool. You have to get out of combat, of course. Minions don't break it, so it's good if you're in a lane by yourself, maybe freezing a lane out. Has gone with the Doran shield start for any Garen fans playing at home. But late game, <laughs> it's a terrific tool. It means that if you ever disengage a Siege and you're using a Garen, I guess, in a, any form of split put situation, in any team fight that is being long and drawn out, and I guess you can get out of combat, it does give him a lot of regen, makes him extremely healthy, couple it with a Warmog's armor. I was armor, gonna say that, yeah. And he's very hard to deal with. As you see him also busting a move, dances quite like Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! No, 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 no. People are not going to find that gif. That is not going to happen. Snake and Ella hanging out by their blue buff here as well. And they might actually be taking the, um, the Gromp here. And that cheeky grin on your face, you get rid of that spawn. All right. Judgment going to be used just to help with the Gromp. And Amazing J heading towards the top side. And we're going to have standard lanes. Yeah, it certainly looks to be that way. And it looks like they're just taking the small, uh, I guess, little parts of the blue buff. I don't actually know what they're called. Yeah, they're, they're little sentinels or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I think they are called sentinels. Are they called sentinels? Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. Whatever they're called, they took them away just for a little bit of an experience lead. They don't take as much damage as you do doing a full camp and then still able to get back into that lane. And you can see already with the W, with the shield, Crystal able to harass terrifically. I think this is the most underrated uh, part of Cogmore's kit and it's how well he lanes. He's oh, extremely yeah. long range. That W costs no mana. So you really can use your spells with a little bit of abandon in the laning phase. And he's very difficult to deal with. As we see, Garen, speaking about no mana, none at all. Can just use abilities whenever he wants. Just do your buttons, is what a, a Garen fan would say. Just constantly run at people and press your buttons. Exactly right. And he has, of course, the ability to cancel out slows, which is good against Maokai. Because if he gets hit by a Q, can activate his Q in response and catch up very nicely, of course. That sapling also does a slow. Has the W for some innate tankiness. Probably the best tanking ability in the game. Wow. So oh, it's a big deal. With that damage reduction. And we see he's going to be aggressed on here. But yes. he's a Garen. Yeah, we'll see whether he has to blow that flash here as well. Judgment going to be used to try and add some tenacity. But he's taking so much damage. Just wanders out. It'll but Garen. But in the end was Garen. So it was fine. Interesting. Raphael going to miss a CS there, but not going to find Barker here as well. Some good aggression in response from Barker. Looking to get some work done. Does step off the minion wave and zone very effectively. So you can see early Diana trying to shove in, make Barker use his spells to farm out that wave underneath the turret. But because of the early gank top, it has meant that Drizzle has been able to go for a three buff start here. Yeah, looking for the enemy blue buff. He's going to get knocked up here as well. A shoe comes around and he's going to be able to take down that blue as well. So heads up play out of Drizzle, recognizing that with the Rek'Sai in the top lane, would have recalled for the quickest way back into the jungle and able to get the three buff start uncontested. Even pulled Cogmore out of lane for a little bit whilst Kane stayed. So he's completely equal on CS when he was getting a little bit bullied at the start of the match. And... All in all, Energy Pacemaker controlling this early game a little bit better. And you have to say, it's on the back of that Garen pick, making sure that Beast had to head towards that top side. Oh, it's just terrifying. If you don't early gank the Garen, it's going <laughs> to snowball out of control. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's assuming Amazing J is going to build Ghostblade into Infinity Edge, am I correct? Yep, that is the build. That is the build. Beautiful. I think Sunfire Cape's probably better in competitive play. Really? Do you think Garen in competitive play really is that a thing that should work? Or well, we're gonna see. I mean, he's yeah. here. That's true. We will find out. Does have a CS lead there on the top side as Flandre had head back to base. Ooh, and amazing. Drizzle day. extremely low. He's gonna be spotted out here from Beast. Probably has to abandon that camp. Yeah, Beast actually oh. gonna be able to find some prey here as well. And uh, look. Not going to be able to find the kill. That's the main thing. Judgment going to be used onto Flandre here. He's not too bothered by it. Does answer oh, back with a fair bit of damage. Going aggressive. Needs to be careful here. Garen trading extremely well. Yeah, manages to get the second Q off there as well in that rotation. So Flandre does have to be careful. Amazing J almost level 6. And that ultimate does a heck of a lot of damage. Yeah, but it's, it does at the start of the game. But it's, of course, magic damage. You don't build much of that penetration coming through. And does struggle with it a little bit late game. So it's good early. Definitely agree there. It's a fantastic execute for securing those kills as Garen as you want to pick up as much of the team's gold as you possibly can. <laughs> but doesn't really do much late game. Okay, so 
probably going to be fine as Raphael going to continue to clear out these waves in the mid lane and well try to of course 13 CS behind now no attention from either jungler and look here at in the mid Jaren passive just ticking away Flandre looking in disbelief as he just heals up so much cues him to stop it weird because it's sort of Maokai does that as well just a little bit as spells getting used oh, he's, he's level that. six on one of these waves he ha creeps he has to be oh no he's not he's still a little bit further away so drizzle he's up here early they need the level six otherwise there's no hope they kill the Malka. Flandre actually doing a whole lot of damage to amazing j here as well oh he spots drizzle out as well so they're going to be able to shove this wave in but probably not going to be able to kill the Malka. yeah and that will mean dragon is started up by snake so recognizing now that the jungler is on the top side of the map for energy pacemaker that they can maybe grab an objective for themselves. It has been pinged out, definitely going to be spotted, but nothing the Snake lineup can do about it. Or the Energy Pacemaker lineup. Yep, that one. Yeah, that one. Those guys, nothing they can do about it, of course. And having Barker able to shove this wave in mid very easily here as well is just so important because Raphael, he can't roam. He can't move out of that mid lane. Yeah, exactly right. And I don't think he would be really looking to at this point in the game anyway. He hasn't gone back and shopped yet. He's fallen about 14 behind in CS, but this is what you expect in a melee versus range matchup. And of course, Diana's kit just does so much that the gold really is the bonus to the kit. She's inherently tanky, has a lot of things going on for her with that double gap closer on the ultimate. So... You feel that if he's able to keep this gap, get a good first shop in, it's really the split pushing that is going to be unanswerable as we see Amazing J flying in there <laughs> and spinning back out. The awe in your voice is adorable, Spawn. Is Beast going to be able to take down his blue, uh, red buff here in well, full you got vision the, you of got energy the You got the Evelyn pick yesterday. This I did. Today, I, did. I get the Garen pick. <laughs> That's how it works. And Victor started getting played as well. As Kane's going to find Ella here. Lots of damage coming through from that passive. Voidu is going to disengage relatively effectively, but Ella has to be careful now in this lane. And in competitive play, we must have seen some of the most underplayed champions come through this week. We saw an Evelyn, we saw an Urgot in the NL NALCS of yeah, that's earlier true. this morning. Saw a Varus in the OPL. Varus in the OPL, and now we've seen a Garen in this the is, LPL. This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. And who better to be playing it as well than Amazing J? This guy always pulls out the interesting picks. But we'll see whether it actually pays off here. He's fallen behind just a little bit in farm. Beast paying a little bit more attention up there. Amazing J. With a gold to spend. He's going to probably finish off Giant's Belt, perhaps? I'm not entirely sure. Haven't actually seen what he's grabbed just yet. Does have Giant's Belt. Does have that chain vest as well as Kane taking a lot of damage here on the bottom side. Ella going to get stunned up, but not going to take too much damage. This Kane has to be very careful, of course. Cogman with a whole lot more range than this Lucian. And has the Sheen already. So able to get a lot of poke damage down with that W, with the weaving of the auto attacks after the ultimate. Got to respect what Cogmore brings to the laning phase. And we see Garen having to itemize for that Sunfire Cape means that he's not really itemizing for his lane as much. Will, of course, be able to push extremely effectively, but Maokai doing a lot of magic damage at this point of the game. He's going for the tank build, so won't have that roller to get his, uh, some damage across, but will, of course, with the W, still be able to do some good things as we Whoa. see. Wow, Crystal chunking out Shu and Kane. That was without a Sheen proc as well. That was just the Bio Arcane Barrage. Living Artillery, He's that's dead. one auto attack. Does have to blow their heal far earlier than he otherwise would have. This is very, very frightening. Beast actually going for the steal here of the red buff. He's going to easily be able to pick that one away. Drizzle way too low after taking those wolves, and Kane forced to go back. So a lot of pressure across the map here from Snake, and oh my goodness, Praysig are going to find Shu, but Kane does make it out. Yeah, and across the board, it really is only the Garen standing up in this landing phase. <laughs> All the other members of Energy Pacemaker starting to fall a little bit behind, and it really does show that Garen, the linchpin of this composition, as Flandre going to go very aggressive here onto Amazing J, who doesn't take a whole lot of damage. Ventral Maelstrom doing some work, but Amazing J not going to really answer back with too much damage. And it's a bit of a wet noodle fight between sort of the tank Garen and the big Maokai up there. Yeah, it certainly seems to be the case. There's now even Garen falling 13 CS behind. So let's just say that Snake has won the laning phase.
and hope yep. they move out of it relatively soon because it has been an extremely slow start to an LPL game, Atlas, of course. Yeah. The Dragon was taken earlier. That will be up in about two and a half minutes, so watch for that one. But apart from that, not really much going on around the map. And uh, Energy Pacemaker looking for mid-game spikes in power here as well. I don't know. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. Raphael is going to have that Abyssal Scepter relatively soon. So that could help them with some extra power here as Beast hanging out in the top lane. They really want to kill this Garen. So the thing about uh, team compositions is normally when you put a team comp together, you're looking for someone to, I guess, cover the weaknesses of your comp, which is why sometimes we see mid-game AD carries or mid-game mages. And then the rest of your comp knits together at a certain part. So if you have a late-game insurance policy, maybe in a Cogmore, and then a double AP composition is, ooh, Amazing J needs to be careful. Yeah, he's going aggressive with that judgment there as well as there's the twisted advance. Amazing J forced to use that flash very quickly. The flash in response here as well from Flandre and Beast. Amazing J taking so much damage. There's the ultimate, and Beast may not survive. He does with the Burrow. I think he would have been okay anyway, but utilizing that passive to keep himself alive here as well. And Amazing J falls. But you saw how much work they had to put into him. That's He's true. He's definitely tanky. But yeah, so what I was saying is normally team comps, you, you have a specific time of the game where you're strong. Why Garen doesn't fit into a lot of team comps is because he's not strong at any part of the game, which just means <laughs> that you have an obvious weakness when yeah. you take him into a lineup. Yeah, Crystal actually going to get stunned up here from Shu there as the Monsoon is going to come down. Ooh. Kane, nice piercing light to be able to get some more damage on this Cogmore. Drizzle paying a visit here as well. They might be going for the dive. Is the Living Artillery going to be used just to try and clear out this wave? Another piercing light over the Cogmore as that pot is trying to tick down, trying to keep this Cogmore alive. Doesn't find that one. Monsu able to clear out this ward here at the same time. Of course, that Franken Tib is just hanging out. With the little girl. Abyssal Scepter finished in the mid lane. This is the first spike of the game where you feel Energy Pacemaker has a clear advantage. If Raphael can get onto Baka somehow, will do a lot of damage. And you can see straight away Baka respecting that, not wanting to go anywhere near the Crete Wave now. Recognizes that he's probably in one combo territory because he's gone for the Morellonomicon, hasn't gone for any of the tanky stats that he could. Yeah, Flandre actually... Tanking up Amazing J, no worries at all here. Lands a bit of damage with that Arcane Smash. Energy Pacemaker going to start off the Dragon here. They notice the fact that Raphael is hanging around. They must know that they this is going on. They haven't got a Teleport. And, wow, this is bad. This is bad news. Oh, Flandre doesn't actually get it stopped here as well as Beast comes in. Doesn't manage to steal away the Dragon. Drizzle gets that one, but Energy Pacemaker trying to deal with the Snake members in the pit. It is going to be a kill for Barker, a kill for Crystal here as well as Raphael taking so much damage. Barker just doesn't seem to care as he continues going forward at low health. And Amazing Jay, he's in the top lane. Yeah, he certainly is. He teleported back to lane after that gank came through, and that meant that he didn't have the teleport available. Once again, Snake playing around teleport advantage extremely well. And Amazing Jay going to do some split pushing, but they will lose mid turret and a lot of kills after that dragon fight. I think they went three for nothing. Yeah, three for nothing, and the Dragon did go over to Energy Pacemaker, so that's something that they can hang their hat on, but they lost the middle lane out of turret, and that bottom lane out of turret is going to cop a lot of creep damage here as well and kill a lot of resources that Energy Pacemaker sorely need because this is a Cogmore at 20 CS in the lead, now has a Trinity Force as well. Yeah, and against Lucian, this lame bully that we've seen become even more popular to try and shut down these late-game hyper carries. It's just not going to be the case this game. As Amazing J manages to grab the top lane turret, so lane successfully won by Garen. Yep, Garen has won 100% of lanes in competitive play in the LPL this season. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> I honestly do. <laughs> oh my goodness. We need Poppy Top to come through now. I don't, I'm not sure we do, actually. I don't, I don't think that's ever a statement that you can ever make. There's a Chachi, please. Crystal going to continue clearing our creeps in this bottom wave. Void is going to help him out with that oh. one as well. This time around, Jarvin going in, looking oh. for the gank. Yeah, now to see the power of this Garen. We'll see whether the ult comes through here as well as Amazing J. He's going to try and auto-attack him oh. up, but they have to be careful. Beast Drizzle. comes around. Flandre trying to turn this one. The Ventral Maelstrom doing some work. Drizzle taking so much damage. Forced to get out of there. Beast picks up the kill. Flandre, though, he's going to go down. The double kill for the Garen. Didn't even need Raphael. Best champion in the game. And who was trapped in there with who? Garen just going <laughs> crazy in the Cataclysm. The Damasian boys. You see the synergy between the Cataclysm, the Judgment. It's going nuts. 
I was expecting the Cataclysm to go forward and then Amazing Jay unable to do anything. To just be trapped outside. Yeah, trapped outside. Uh, but that's not how it works, of course. You just Cataclysm a target that Garen's already in the face of. And that's how it works. That was beautifully well done. One thing I will say is Garen is very sad. Because okay. charged with the protection of Prince Jarvan IV and yeah. let him fall in that fight. Oh, a bit of the lore coming through. This is wonderful. We're getting so many different facets of League of Legends from you today, Spawn. <laughs> it's brilliant. No bias either. Oh, wondrous stuff. As this red buff is going to go down to Kane. Energy Pacemaker looking to try and eke back a little bit of an advantage here. 3,000 gold's the lead for Snake thus far. Snake have complete control over this game. Well, 3,000 gold lead, only one turret tar in the lead. Yeah, but they've got a Cogmore who's 30 CS ahead and a very farm Zareth in the mid lane who's doing fantastic things as well. They've sent the split push through for Diana. Wow! The crystal takes so much damage. There's the Moonfall as well. Monsoon going to be used to try and get Raphael Garen. out of this fight. Garen coming in on the Siege minion here as well as Drizzle finds his way around. Shu looking for a stun. Crystal falls down to Cathy and Surprise. Going to try and find some damage here. Does a whole lot of work to this Annie. And Ella is going to be saved. They might be able to get some turrets in this one, though, because that's five members of Energy Pacemaker in the bottom lane. Yeah, so they're just the big collapse came through from Energy Pacemaker, sending the Garen in. He's got another Giant's Belt as well as those Mercury Treads, and now got the flank on potentially Baka, who's running away. He's got a red buff here as well. Not a lot of ability to get away from this Garen as Raphael and take down the outer turret. So this is one thing I will say about Energy Pacemaker's lineup is they have a clear split pushing advantage. Okay. Diana is so much better in split pushing situations than any of the members of Snake. They can maybe send the Rek'Sai after her and hope he gets tanky enough that he can clear out the waves. But in being able to fight someone, Flandre is not going to be able to fight Raphael. Cogmore definitely cannot go to the same lane as Raphael. We just saw the benefit of that as Shu gets the Tibbers. Yeah, there's the Tibbers coming through. The culling coming down from Kane as well. Cataclysm onto Crystal. He's taking a while to die, and Raphael is going to eat a lot of turret shots. The heal to be used, and he's not going to die to that Akathian surprise, but they get at least a summoner spell. Yeah, so they get the summoner spell, but once again, Raphael really starting to get going. Has that needlessly large rod. And this Diane is going to become a problem if continuing to be able to split push as we see Flandre and Amazing J continuing to fight back and forward. Amazing J starting to get the, I guess, upper hand in these t little bits of skirmishes. Look at all the damage coming through. <laughs> Look at all the... What damage coming through? My goodness. The passive from Maokai was enough to get rid of everything that happened over that last minute of trading. I'm Maokai's sure. passive is one of the strongest in the game. Yeah. That is what makes part of his kit. Yeah, it's very, very good. It means that Garen doesn't actually do very much to this Malkai at all. <laughs> uh, which is very sad. Very sad. We'll see whether Amazing J can affect the map in other ways. Of course, not going to be able to kill Fl Flandre, but Flandre unable to kill anyone. He's just going to be annoying. CC everyone up just to make sure that his Cogmore can get the damage down. Shoot. Let's have that stun available. Is Ella going to clear out these? Wards as well. Dragon up in another 15 seconds. Crystal takes away the Grump. Does have the Bilgewater Cutlass now as well. So a little bit of self-peel. It's going to be available from this Cogmore. And Prey Seekers, Arcano Pulses, everything coming through. Whoa. Shoot takes half of his health. He might die if he hits all of these. Not going to find it. The last one comes through. Oh, Howling Gale forced to be flashed out of the way off from Shu. And that is going to mean a Dragon easily here as Beast looking for Raphael and Drizzle. Actually, is he looking for them? Because that was two members, and Beast just turns this one around. There's the slow to come down. The shoe Garen is out. behind them. He's got the flank. He's looking for it. There's the massive move from Flandre with that Righteous Glory. Arcano Pulse coming through here as well. Garen in the back line trying to do some work, but that is going to be Barker falling down. Raphael taking a lot of damage. Crystal, he's going to kill Raphael. Amazing Jay gets exhausted. Did he do anything to Crystal? I'm not entirely sure as Judgment comes down, but it's not going to be enough. Drizzle, the last man standing for Energy Pacemaker, and you were pointing frantically at the screen the fact that Garen, he'd got onto the Cogmore, and then Cogmore sort of just walked away. Yeah, so they just completely ignored him. <laughs> <laughs> Which will mean a Dragon for Snake and a one team fight. The Garen pick not looking to work out. Not yet. Not yet, but late game Garen. I don't know what it does. He lives for a very long time is what he does. Okay, so it's kind of like Scion that doesn't have any... He's like Mundo without a slow. Thing. Ah, good. He has a silence, though. Yeah, he yeah. does. Yeah. 
and his judgment scales off crit, which is good for this build. Randuin's Omen almost completed from Amazing J, though, so he's at least going to have an AoE slow. He's like a bad Renekton. A bad Renekton. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's now fallen behind in farm here as well, so 24 CS is going to be the lead for Flandre, who now has that Frozen Heart completed as well. 30% cooldown reduction for this Maokai. He's going to be twisting and advancing all over this map. We saw he has no fear in that department. Definitely does not. He's able to even withstand the Diana at this point in the game. Who is, I guess, a force to be reckoned with. 2-1-2 now finished up that Zonya's Hourglass. You really do feel that is the win condition. And I say the win condition because there probably is only one for Energy Pace Baker <laughs> at this point in the game. And that is ensuring that Diana is the split pusher, taking down these turrets. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw the incredible Selfish build, which is that Lich Bane coming through. Going oh, to yep. be able to get some more work done in these split pushing scenarios. Adds to the one shot potential. As you see, Beast is a person that's going to answer the Garen split push. And I was going to say, and going to be made to pay for it, but doesn't look to be the case. No, he just walks away from the Garen. Needs a Fromo. Fromo? Frozen Mallet. Frozen Mallet. I thought you were talking about Frozen Yogurt for a second there. Interesting. Yeah, Frozen Mallet. Does that uh, work on Judgment? Does Judgment get Frozen Mallet books? That's really cool. Oh, not Judgment. Um, oh, no, no, no. Okay, what's yeah. a Q? Yeah, it's not, it doesn't proc on hit effects. That would actually yeah. make Garen ridiculously strong. Imagine that. Red buff. Oh. Yeah, no, no, no. Ravenous Hydra. With you judgment? can use Ravenous Hydra as you're spinning. Oh, okay, active. Cool. There we are. You learn something new every day. Unfortunately, this particular bit of learning was about Garen. Crystal going to be able to take down this Rift Scuttler, though. No dragon to speak of just yet, which is why the game has slowed down just a little bit. And you see the problem with Garen. If a jungler can answer a top laner's split push with no fear, then probably not going to be a very successful game, as we see. Because the uh, teleport is down for Beast, they just... Uh, for Flandre, sorry. They're just using Beast to answer that one. And Raphael, nice dodge there of some of the damage, but then picks up the rest of it on his way up. Yep, okay, no pulse. Not on a great cooldown. But doesn't take a whole lot of damage from it, of course. Does have the, um, the Abyssal Scepter, so he's going to be okay. He's going to be clearing out some of these minions here on the top side of the map here as well. Is Amazing J going to do the same and then try to do oh, a damage? The battle oh, of the Titans. Look at the damage. Can you see it? Snake now. Flandre happy to tank up this turret. Amazing J continuing to judge all over Beast. Just building up that fury and then going underground again and negating all of the damage from Amazing J. Oh, Amazing J, he's actually starting to get some work done. Beast needs to be careful here, forced to tunnel away. Yeah, there's the Prey Seeker coming through. Amazing J going to close the distance. Nice use of that knock up as Amazing J. And then decides that, yep, I'm not going to be able to catch up to the Rek'Sai. And he'll get away. But look, now the passive going to be at work. I don't know. Oh, the oh no, Prey stops Seeker the passage. stopping the passage. Ugh. Ugh. Complete nightmare for Amazing J. What is he going to do? He's going to wait, and then the passive will be up again. As you can see, it's like he's using a potion. This is ridiculous. Oh, it's better than a potion. Is it? doesn't cost any money. Well, that's true. But like, you know, uh, it actually is better than a potion as well. Um, as we see, Raphael, really the linchpin of this composition, although... Kane quietly has got back even in CS nearly. Is 0, 2, and 1, so not having a fantastic game so far in terms of team fighting, but has been able to pick up the Brutalizer now, going towards that Yomu's Ghost Blade, so a very mid-game centric build yeah. coming through, recognizing that he needs some flat penetration to be able to get through the Rek'Sai, get through the Maokai at this point in the game. Wouldn't be surprised if his next game is the... Uh, Next item, sorry, is the Last Whisper. Just going for even more armor pen because they are really starting to stack it against this Garen, against the Lucian, and they need some tools to be able to deal with it. Garen in his own right. Sunfire Cape as well as the Randuin's Omen. He's extremely tanky, although Crystal probably not going to mind with his two completed items. That Blade of the Ruined King as well as the Trinity Force, of course, synergizing so well with the kit that comes out of Cogmore. The attack speed, the movement speed. It's just got everything you could wish for in a hyper carry that uses that on-hit effect from his W to really do a lot of his damage at this point in the game. And Barker, 
He's got a Death Cap. He's got a Morella Nomicon. They're all looking very nicely set for this next Dragon Fight that will be up in 30 seconds. Yeah, and Barker has just sort of been consistent this game. Clearing out waves, that's his job. He's built up his items and now can sort of keep clearing, keep just being a bother, creating pressure in these lanes. And he's been very, very safe. 1-1 one, one and 2, but not sort of the stand standout um, Barker performance on the Xerath that you expect, just very consistent. Yeah, certainly has been, but really not many team fights have broken out as of yet. So let's let's see exactly how they respond. They won the first team, team fight very convincingly. Just ignoring the Garen on the back line. Garen going back, picked up that uh, Spectre's Cow. Spectre's Cow, so he's going to be tankier against the magic damage, but Dragon has been started and it's going to fall completely uncontested. Yeah, no vision available for Energy Pacemaker. They are just milling about in the mid lane, so not going to find this one. And that is going to be, I believe, the third Dragon now for, um, for Snake. Yes, it is. So movement speed acquired. I'm looking forward to patch 5.5, Jake. That's what I am. Oh, as there's a fight in the jungle. Yeah, Flandre actually teleporting into the backside here as well. Kane gonna stop that culling as the monsoon comes through from Ella. He's getting ignored though. It's amazing. Jay trying to find Crystal, who's completely out of mana. There's the oh my goodness! The explosion onto Kane. He's off the rift. Amazing Jay finally with the attention that he looks for. But that is going to be after everyone else is dead. That's gonna be doing any damage and Crystal cancelling some auto attacks. Amazing Jay having a bit of a party, and eventually Crystal going to decide to kill the Garen. Yeah, so Garen falls down two for nothing there, although Raphael might be able to pick up one in response. Yeah, Barker is going to have to use that flash if he wants to get out, but straight into the Annie. And Raphael with that Crescent Baron's Slash going to be able to get started up it. across the other side of the map. Yep, and Crystal has a whole lot of Baron damage as well, of course, with that Cogmore, Biowakane Barrage, and Blade of the Ruined King. Drizzle wants to come through for a steal. There's the Righteous Glory on Shoe. They're going to immediately do destroy this Anius Crystal. Not a whole lot of mana, but it doesn't matter. Just right-click some people. A double kill now for this Cogmore. And Raphael, ain't no way he can get out. Triple kill. And that is theoretically the ace, but Kane, he's respawned. Yeah, so able to, I guess, trade five for one across the entirety of the rift there. Back and forth. But that'll be also Baron going down, Atlas. Maybe about a 9,000 gold advantage. And... Now I don't think there's any win conditions for Energy Pacemaker. Yeah, it's looking a little bit more difficult for them. Of course, maybe if Amazing J finishes the Banshee's Veil and builds an Infinity Edge, he won't be ignorable anymore. Yeah, well, that's a problem. that they, They're just not... They're kiting him out, making sure that even with the Flash, he's not able to get on top of Crystal. You saw that Crystal went extremely low to about a quarter health, but then through the lifesteal, just able to get it all back up. Garen really does need to be able to kill people within that initial combo to be effective. Otherwise, it's completely ineffective. Yeah. Well, we've, we're seeing that demonstrated today. But of course, I haven't lost faith. Don't worry. I still believe that Garen is going to find his success in competitive League of Legends. I lost only West as soon as West tries. Yeah, left. I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna mention West tries. I'm not gonna lie to you. Unfortunately, haven't seen him in the LCS just recently. I hope and dream every day that he comes back. But sure, gonna throw down some more. Oh, looking for a righteous glory here as well as Kane. They, they used no damage to him. Yeah, they used the stun onto the Naokai. That means the crystal can play. Further up here as well, Raphael continuing to try and split push as the culling comes through to try and clear out the minion wave. Flandre just being a bodyguard for this Cogmore as Preyseeker looking for some targets from Beast. And Snake now trying to be break into this base and use this Baron buff to good effect. Well, they're pushing in on two out. different waves, so they're going to be able to grab bottom definitely here. So that's the first tier 2 turret going down. Now they're on the base turret coming in there. Flandre going to be able to pick up that turret in the mid lane as well with some help from Crystal and all of a sudden Energy Pacemaker are in real danger of having their base broken wide open. Crystal's even gone for a last whisper. Not a very eff gold efficient item on Cogmore specifically yep. just because of the way the W works. Scale is a lot better off attack speed than it does anything else. However, that's just a build that you go, if you think you're going to win the game relatively soon, want to make the most of your item purchase whilst you have it. And when you have a brick wall of a Garen that he's not doing much, but you want to be able to kill him a little bit quicker because he is frustrating to be around in general. Yep. 
Yeah, um, says mean things while yeah. he's alive. That he is sort of going thing. to be useful as Flandre has some attention from more members. Yeah, he's not too worried about it. Arcane Smash is going to be oh, doesn't get cute. knocked up here as well as Drizzle not going to find that one as in comes Beast now and tunnels his way in. Shu taking a lot of damage from Flandre. This is three members on just the Maokai. Now finally Ella finds his way around. Kane gets destroyed. This tree is so huge and so difficult to deal with. That is an immediate use of that Zonya's Hourglass. Barker going to get the attention of Raphael as Crystal just rips through him. Barker gets the kill. And Amazing J tries to find someone to hit with his cool-looking sword, but he's going to get stunned up. There's the Prey Seeker. The Randu and Zomin going to be used by both of them. But Crystal decides, this time I can't be bothered killing the Garen, and I'm going to take the base. And surprise, surprise, he's just being completely ignored again. Oh, my goodness. He's having one of those feelings like, oh, I just feel like I don't exist. You know, Beast. Oh, he stops the one back. No one can stop Amazing J from going home, though. As Nashor's Tooth is now being completed by Raphael, but that's more of a split pushy type consistent damage build. Yeah. Definitely viable. Also has 20% CDR. Oh, yeah. It's brilliant. Very good item for Diana. Doesn't quite have the boots completed, but that is three items on this Diana. Able to definitely do some cons consistent damage in these fights. It's amazing. Jay now just wants to kill some creeps. Get out his frustration. Even they're going to start ignoring him soon. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Spirit Visage is going to be the option here for Amazing J. Of course, I don't know why I suggested the Banshee's Veil when it synergizes so beautifully with his passive. Assuming he's ever out of combat. But, look. We'll see. It's not over yet, ladies and gentlemen. QSS as well as another BF Sword has been picked up by Crystal. It's close Ooh. to over, ladies and gentlemen. He is being camped out here. Needs to be careful. He's going for the wave. Yeah, Raphael forced to use that flash here as well as Flandre looks for it. There's the Righteous Glory popped. He wants to come through to pick up that Twisted Advance. There's the knock-up. The oh, my gosh. Raphael ain't going anywhere. And Barker able to use his ultimate just to help out with the damage there as well as Kane <coughs> does cull down onto Crystal. Amazing J definitely able to ignore these turrets. Is Crystal going to use... His QSS now needs to probably get some auto attacks into this Garen because his lifesteal is going to be more than the damage that Garen's going to be doing to him. Shoot, not able to find it. The triple knockup to come down from Beast as he's now in amongst three members. Amazing J, he is going to fall down. Flandre picks it up with a twisted event. Shoot, going to die as well. But Crystal, he's dead. Kane able to escape. It's a three for one, but the Cogmore's dead. Mission accomplished, Atlas. As now all Kane needs to do is get away. Doesn't he's not look gonna like do he's that. going to. So another <laughs> nearly ace actually comes through. Drizzle did survive on the top side of the map. They're not going to really mind as they pick up their fourth dragon of the game. Yeah, Beast easily going to be able to lock this one down. And Snake with a firm lead in this game, you, you have to say. 13,000 gold, a little bit more. Is Barker just going to Arcano Pulse his Blue Sentinel to death? Shocking orb there as well. Nicely done. But on a serious note, if we look at how Energy Pacemaker has approached these two games, I really think they have missed a trick here. Barker's yeah. champion pool, two games in a row, he's got a com comfortable champion. Crystal's champion pool, two games in a row, he's got a comfortable champion. And these are both the champions that were banned away or picked away in the last series that we saw Snake lose. Exactly right. And I, I just think that Beast has shown that whilst he has two champions that are much better, that he can play these other champions a little bit more flexible. Has the Nidalee, has the Rek'Sai, yep. willing to jump on the power picks. Ella and Flandre's champion pools have never been in doubt. Yeah. Being able to pick up multiple champions. Of course, Ella loving that uh, Jana that now has an Ohm Wrecker in the inventory. Which Interesting. Is very good. Um, very uh, good? Yeah. I would have liked the banner also of command. A Zeke's Herald in the top lane to just augment. The Cogmore's Cogmore damage. damage even further. Of course, Maokai also has the highest base AD of any champion in League of Legends. That's true. That's true. That's why you build Doran's Blades on him. It's true. He's going to take a lot of damage. Does manage to get a stun onto Barker, but he doesn't offer too much in response as Crystal's going to be able to pick up that kill. Beast looking for Raphael, who's completely out of mana. He's going to pop the Zonyas, and Drizzle's going to die. The double kill coming through. Kane gets hit by a shocking orb, and that's a triple kill now for the Cogmore. Amazing Jay flying through into the fight to try and do something. As the Shocking Orb just going to lock him down and he's eventually going to die. 
And that is a clean ace now for Snake. Energy Pacemaker were looking for something. Not entirely sure what it was, but they do find the surrender. Yeah, so they're able to get that one right at least. And we see smiles across the yeah, board for Andre, Snake. Yeah, lots of respect now for Amazing J. <laughs> they're, they're, they look a lot happier than they did yesterday coming through after the disappointing loss. But they managed to pick up the 2-0. Yeah. And, you know, this is after five draws in a row after a loss and then a loss yesterday as well. This is what Snake need to try and catch up to that second place spot in OMG. And dropping that game yesterday would have made them feel horrible. And now they're moving forward. Now they're creating the pro progression that they need to as this third place team that rocketed into the LPL. Yeah, exactly right. And you just see... There seems to be a way to beat them, but they also seem to be starting to diversify across the yeah. map. Beast champion pool, as I said, getting much better. And Snake, they're not showing the earlier dominance they did, but it looks like they're starting to piece it together. Yeah, and we'll see whether it is going to be Barker finding a few more champions to play. And of course, Crystal able to diversify there as well and see what, what the next team to face off against Snake does. But ladies and gentlemen, still three more matchups to come here in the LPL. Don't go anywhere. We'll just have a short break.